Okay, well, hello out there. Uh, firstly, if you're not subscribed, please consider doing so. And a particular hello to my members as well. So this is 2018, Zoe. It's done about 94,000, something like that. Um, it's actually had a new motor under um, warranty from Renault last year, which is nice. It's got a fairly shiny motor on it, and that's got a later date stamped on it. So you can, if we get down there, 2024. So that's cool. And the issue it's got now is a burnt neutral. So this is basically from lots of long single phase charging. And um, this is the charging filter. So the type two socket on the front bumper, and um, the actual power from that socket connects onto this connector okay so it's on the stack it's kind of central facing forwards this is the original one from the car i've just taken off and you can see in there if i get a bit more light hang on let's move my head torch down get that right in there there we go we can see that is all nice and crispy and burnt so that's the neutral connector it's a lot smaller um this was unfortunately designed for France, where um, single phase is, um, where sorry, three phase is much more common at home. So in the UK, we do lots of single phase charging because we have single phase 60, 80, 100 amp connections. Usually 100 at home don't commonly have three phase, but some people do. So we do a lot of single phase charging. This being a 40 kilowatt hour Zoe, you could be charging for up to about seven hours. So this is the neutral. It's a lot smaller than the others. So these, these are are the four are the earth and the um, three phases so live one two three yeah slightly poor design neutrals a lot smaller but yeah in france it's not that common to do a lot of single phase charging at home basically you've got three phase and Renault really believed that three phase ac would be the future um but unfortunately obviously the world went dc so this is quite common i've seen it a few times um so recommended in a previous video that um, if you commute with your Zoe, especially a 40 or a 52 kilowatt hour, um, if you have a long commute and you plug it in every night, if you can put a slight pause in your charging to get it to charge for sort of maybe four hours and then stop for half an hour and then carry on charging, if you can do that, it just enables this pin just to cool down a little bit and hopefully stops this from happening. So a few people say to me when they have this issue, is this charging filter sits on the top of here and it's got all these bolts around it. Well, it did until I took them out. So people say to me, well, you know, can I just take that unit and lift it off? The answer, unfortunately, is no. So the wires from that unit go out and they go down inside there. We'll have another sort of a bit more of a look at that in a minute. But they go down and those three phase wires are bolted on, the comms wires clipped on. So it's not possible to take that unit off the top. It kind of is fairly tantalizing because it's got bolts all along the top, but you can't just lift it up, unfortunately. So um, another thing people say to me is, well, it's just a pin, it's just a connector. Can I replace sort of this connector? So you can buy these connectors. You can sort of buy the pins. The downside is, and just get that to stand up, there we go. You've basically got no um, slack on the cable. So if you were to undo this, you've got to then de-pin it. So you've got to push these pins out. So they've got little tangs. You can just sort of see. And if I just put something to oh, point at while we look down there. So you can see the tang there. So you've got to undo all of those. So if you take off these Torx bolts, then you move that tang to the side and push the pin down so that it's not properly in. This connector can come off. These are the interlock wires. They're even more difficult to deep pin without damaging them, basically. And if you manage to do that and then take this off, which is kind of going to be tricky because it's in a bit of an awkward place in the bonnet anyway, because this is quite low. So you're kind of down behind the radiator. So it's kind of like really, really difficult to even do that basically if you manage to do that for the sake of argument and so you've got this orange part off and you've just got the the wires with these connectors all sticking out you'd probably have to cut the interlock because you can't deepen that without damaging it um you've you've basically hardly got any room there's not enough slack on the cable to pull it out cut it off and then crimp a fresh one on anyway and that's if you manage to sort of buy this connector which some of these are available they're just a standard sort of you know standard part they're not made by Renault they just buy them in so yeah that's that's how it goes basically you've got to get to this stage where you get the whole stack out 
and um, get the side panel off and then you can sort out the wires. So in terms of actually doing the wires, disconnecting those, so I can show you in here. So they bolt down onto the charging rectifier. So under here, so this is the comms, comms lead. And then you can just about, where's the red one? See that red one? So it goes red, green, black, and they go from the side. So from this right hand side and then over it like that. So I've just wiggled those back in. It is a pain, but yeah, that's the configuration they should be in. Um, it's obviously a lot easier if all this stuff's not here, but you know, it'd take a lot more time to strip this down. You've just got to keep wiggling them basically. One little tip, because particularly the black one is really tight when you're pushing them in. Um, so one tip is, so on, this is how they are originally at kind of that right angle. If you just um, angle those slightly like that, um, just with sort of two two pairs of pliers, just don't sort of strip, you know, strip this insulation off. Um, but yeah, just moving that slightly just makes it not slightly not quite as big basically to go in and then as you bolt it down it will just kind of bend that back basically so that makes that a little bit easier um another thing is the actual tabs that are underneath it so they come from the blue capacitor there so those tabs um you can bend those as well um, and that's quite easy and one of those i just couldn't wiggle it in i think it was that green one because the comms cable's in the way so i just bent that tab upwards a little bit just enabled me to slide that the metal of the green one onto this side and then just push it back down again so that makes that quite a bit easier so a couple of little things that can help just in terms of the order the cables go in let's put this down because the first time i did this i sort of pulled it out and then i thought Ooh, you know how are these cables kind of on top of each other so it's like that basically it's red green black and then this big cable just goes basically over that one um, and then you've got your your sort of tabs one here on that one one here and one there and that's how that goes on unfortunately it is quite a long job um there are also some compatibility restrictions so you can't just stick kind of any one of these on um, so my replacement unit is from a 2019, so slightly newer, but same part number. So, um, yeah, I kind of only really buy quite late or try and buy as late as possible. Um, it's more difficult if you've got a 22 kilowatt hour Zoe, because you've then got to get matching parts. Um, but this issue tends to happen less with those cars because the battery is a lot smaller. So sort of like three and a half hours, a 22 kilowatt hour car is going to be charged. So you can't you can't physically take on any more electricity at seven kilowatts. And if you're charging slower, obviously it's not going to be so much of an issue anyway. So, yeah, I guess that's another option as well. To, if, if you don't need a full charge every night, it's to charge slower. Um, if you've got, um, like I've got an untethered home charge point. So I've just got a socket, a box with a socket on the wall. I've got a 16 amp cable. So for testing purposes, sometimes I want to charge at 16 amps. So... I can't select it in the car, or I can't, my charger doesn't have, you know, I can't set the amps on the charger, but if I use a 16 amp cable, then the, um, then the car will only draw 16 amps, because it can um, know that that's the capability of the cable, basically. So, yeah, that would also um, prevent this issue from happening, because you've just got half the amps going through it. But, yeah, relatively, is it common? It is fairly common, to be fair. Probably the most common issue with these is motor bearings, um, obviously this one it's had its motor so yeah this um yeah probably one of the sort of one of the next most common issues really um yeah this one was charging off and on that tends to be the um tends to be the sort of symptom really it's kind of charging half the time um and one other interesting thing is because this car's had a motor at Renault um I sometimes wonder um especially with suspension bolts basically whether um, whether Renault or anyone else actually follows the documentation. And what I mean by that is here is Renault's picture um, of the front, sort of front of the car. Try and get rid of this thing there. Um, reflection. Um, and the torque settings for the bolts and whether you should reuse the bolts or not. Okay. So quite useful because I can just glance at the torque settings. So if we look at this one, so we've got the shock tower here behind the sort of hub. And these two bolts here... Um, there are 105 uh, newton meters. It says you should not reuse the nut and not reuse the bolt. So I thought, well, this is interesting because the last people who worked on this car were Renault. Okay. And you can pretty much guarantee, even when you're doing like a lower arm, that's quite common on this car. So it's got three bolts, 105 newton meters, and you shouldn't reuse it. 
then you've got the um, this it's that one so that one grips the ball joint 62 newton meters do not reuse it and then you've got this one so that goes through that second subframe and then through that part for this lower arm really common for this ball joint to wear out um and yeah 80 newton meters do not reuse it i mean the, <laughs> the age of the bolts on there and these cars go through lower arms like anything and garage is just do not replace the bolts basically it's actually very hard to even get the bolts from Renault because I've got some but yeah so what I thought was interesting on this car so I've got all the bolts here so because I looked at the nuts and it made me think ah oh, that's been replaced and then I thought oh yeah this has been to Renault to have a new motor so what we can tell from this is that even in a Renault workshop they do not replace that bolt which you're meant to um, but they do replace the nut and that's interesting because I replaced the nuts as well um, I didn't do at the start but then I had a car where they, some of the nuts looked a bit poor they are a lock nut so as a matter of course I replace all these nuts now the hub nut yeah difficult to tell if Renault have replaced that kind of pretty much looks like all the others basically it is quite shiny yeah but I just thought that was fascinating really because we know for a fact that Renault are not following the Renault documentation effectively they're reusing these bolts and if Renault are reusing them in a Renault workshop then I'm happy to as well obviously subject to the bolt being in suitable condition and everything else sensible but yeah they are just replacing these nuts um, and that's what I do now as well so hopefully that is interesting I'm going to crack on with this one um, I've got myself a new engine crane recently which is quite cool um, just what I've got myself over here yeah very nice and shiny engine crane which I'm quite pleased with. My other one was the cheap one that I bought second hand, basically to do the first Zoe I ever did. And it was pretty naff when I got it, it did the job, but yeah, it's certainly been getting worse. So I um, treated myself to a new engine crane, so that was exciting. The only thing I didn't um, account on is it came like Lego. It took me about two hours to build. So um, yes, I didn't um, I didn't really plan those two hours into, uh, into my schedule, but yeah, it was all good. It's all good, that's all built. And it's good fun. Right, there will be um, an update on the legal case with Renault because that has been really consuming my time. But that, that is actually sort of coming to a head now. Um, and yeah, I've sort of not got as far with it as I wanted. But I have learned a lot. And um, yeah, had specialist review of the contract and stuff like that. So yeah, there'll be a lot of information coming out um, in one video where I just go through what's happened and what I've learned and... Um, yeah, basically, if you want to take yours further, the kind of information you'll need, basically. So hopefully that is interesting. I'm going to crack on with this car, and I will catch you later. Cheers.